Well, for Jolyon, thank you uh, very much, and um, it's a great pleasure to be here. And um, I do want to talk about uh, one book, actually, because one book is part of the motivation for coming here. But my first book, which I think one might politely call a reimagination of my PhD, uh, was published in the Cambridge series, of which Duncan was uh, the co-editor. And I think the other editor was Alastair Key, who I think was also here at, uh, at New College. And so in the early 90s, I found Duncan, as has been reported, kind of uh, warm and supportive and encouraging. And um, I also bumped into him at various of the annual conferences of the Society for the Study of Theology. And what I remember most about him is that he had a very... Um, he had a habit of wearing very brightly colored sweaters um, in the more informal parts of the conference. And so in his honor, I thought I would um, try in my own modest way to mimic that. Uh, but all I want to do is make a couple of points by way of responding to the conference and just, just to make a couple of points about public theology and some of its issues, if you like. Recently, I've been doing some work in the history of political Theology, and I wondered if one issue in political theology might transfer into public theology. That in the, so I don't know, the 60 or 70 years ago, uh, ago period for the sort of um, restarting, so to speak, of political theology, uh, one strain of political theology we might call secular or post secular political theology that a number of European philosophers have taken up political theology and the whole idea of God as a serious fiction and I'm thinking of Zizek and others. And I wondered if there wasn't something parallel going on in public theology, that when public theology comes to its kind of full truthfulness, so to speak, we move beyond God as a serious fiction. And I can give you an example of that. One thing I do, as Jolyon pointed out, at the University of Manchester is I direct the Lincoln Theological Institute, and we had a conference called Self and Society a few years back. And one of the panels was on self-society and the environment. And one of the contributors, talking to the matter of the environment, spoke about nature as gift. And the other person on the panel had worked for various NGOs and has, as their kind of policy and communications person and was really struck by this language and said, wow, we don't have this sort of language. This is a really rich terminology to talk about nature as gift. And it seemed to me, can you go beyond that point of t one person going, here's a way of talking about nature in terms of gift and by implication a giver. And somebody else picking that up and going, wow, how would we respond to that? And I wondered really if that was almost a kind of description of public theology. What happens next? is public theology. So we might have all sorts of programmatic descriptions of it, so to speak, but actually it's what happens next is one, one person says, gift, and the implication of the giver, another person says, whoa, that seems a rich vocabulary. What do the parties say next? Seems to me an example of public theology in action. Part of that might indeed be the interrogation of the whole notion of what public might mean. So I was struck by Michael's presentation this morning, and it seems to me that part of, what, of a response to that, those, some of those images, might be we'd actually quite like to keep nature private. If public means accessible to industrial activities... So the whole notion about public and saying we want to have this kind of public theology might also be about uh, considering what is also to be kept private, yes? Is there a sense in which uh, keeping all sorts of natural resources in the ground might be one way of talking about something called private, and that might be the task of a public theology. 
And the other uh, matter that occurred to me is uh, one of my PhD students who um, uh, comes from India, so I thought that was a, a nice connection with Duncan and this conference, is trying to develop a public theology for India. Uh, but of course, he's trying to do it from a Dalit perspective. So he's kind of really interested in what it might mean to reconstruct the public sphere in India from a caste perspective. And so he's mentioned in the notion of the subaltern. So he's building on ideas in post-colonial theory to ask the question, you know, is there a sense in which some people are excluded from the public and therefore the public needs to be remade in some uh, certain sorts of ways? And what might be the Christian theological and what might be the ecclesiological contribution to that? And that, it seems to me, uh, is a kind of interesting... Um, that perhaps we shouldn't too easily receive some sort of notion of what the public might be. And my last point really is just to pursue the theology of public theology. I thought what Heather said this morning about, in relation to practical theology, about theology being rhetorically invoked was an interesting point. I wondered if Duncan's position and, and the title, uh, the Center for Theology and Public Issues, meant he was offering a theology of public issues. And is that different from a public theology? And I suspect they might be rather different. So what, uh, what would we expect to find? So in a sense, that would connect with his Bartianism and a kind of refusal of natural theology we might have public issues and a theological critique of them, but what would it be to have a theology that is in itself public? Is it seems to me a different sort of question. And what sort of idols would such a theology wish to criticize? Uh, one point from the conference I take it that we would want to take up is that this would have to be a comparative theology of the public, that in a sense... Uh, doing a Christian theology of the public is no longer adequate, if it ever was. But presumably the question then emerges about how we think about public in relation to God, which I guess has not been a theme that we've uh, explored a great deal in the conference so far. What would it mean to talk about a God who publicizes what would it mean to talk about a God who makes public? Uh, picking up Heather's uh, notion about creative making. What is the participation of God in this? I had several goes at working this out. I wrote down the God who makes place in the public or the God who takes place in the public. What would be a public work in our present context? And just to connect to Oliver O'Donovan's discussion uh, this morning, I wonder if then public needs some other ideas attached to it, that maybe the notion of public cannot do all the work if we're going to talk about a kind of co-making or co-creating of society. If that's what a public theology is, is really about, it's about trying to work out which are, to quote Donna Haraway, playful differences and which are oppressive and dangerous differences in the effort to make some joint project together and whether public can do all that work and we're going to have to recruit other notions to help us with that. And that is all. Thank you very much. <laughs>